yeah, as I said, we definitely can be intentional about breaking down these these things. Of course. Yeah, yeah. we should. Yeah, we man. should. And, and then, uh, because I tell you, you know, I will tell you again, the Holy Spirit is not in the Adventist church yet. It's my concept. You can beg to differ. Anybody can beg to differ. And I will tell you why I say that. Because when God is in anything, perfection is executed. Perfect. Holiness is felt, seen, and displayed. Mercy, grace, and love is felt, seen, and displayed. Cripple people, by coming out of their vehicles, touching the very ground. I mean, you know, you can beg to differ, should instantly receive healing. When God, when the Holy Spirit is anywhere, anywhere, I'm not asking you, I'm not asking, I am telling you that there's going to be newness. There's going to be mercies, grace, abundance of love being felt. You cannot deny the presence of God. You cannot. When the presence of God is present, everything transforms, brethren. Can't, all right, the Bible tell you that when Peter walked, his very shadow healed people as he passed. His very shadow. Was Peter God? No, Peter was not God. But Peter had so much God in him that his very shadow had the power of the Holy Spirit to heal people as he passed. You can imagine if all of us had that same connection with God? You think thieves and gunmen would walk into church and kill people like that? The mad bridging? We know it, the, the, the temple before Jesus came, the whole temple had it that there is not any and any priests could go into the temple. The high priest, the highest one, had to have bells, bells attached to his clothes, his garment, and a rope around his waist. Because if he go around there and he's unholy, I, he I, dies instantly. And nobody can go around there until another high priest is chosen. You have to use the rope to pull him out. You can't go around there. That's the same kind of temple that exists. It's just that it's not physically on earth. It, the, the, the ultimate lamb is Jesus. And me and you know, the woman with the issue of blood just touched the M of God's God. And that's what her faith told her to do because she didn't have to touch him enough. If she had believed as the, cent as the centurion soldier, mm -hmm. right, right. she would have been healed. Yeah. So, and Jesus made a profound statement with the same issue of the centurion soldier. He said, Never, when the man said to him, Lord, you don't have to come because I am in charge of my soldiers. And when I tell them to go, they go, they have to go. So if you are God, you don't have to come. You speak the word and thy servant shall be healed. Ha! Jesus said. Now, this is, the, this is the most powerful statement made by God for me. Never. Have I found such faith? Jesus didn't say that he didn't find faith. He found the woman with the issue of blood's faith where she believed that she had to touch. He found other persons who say, Lord, you have to come. You must come in order for it to get done. Um, what, what's, what's, his, what's, his, what's his name there that died? Lazarus. Mm -hmm. hmm? His sister said, you come. Yeah, you, yeah. you need to come. Yeah, 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 yeah. He delayed himself. He's like, well, you guys have been walking with me and been seeing the miracles that I have wrought upon people. And you guys still are convinced that I need to come? That means you don't believe. You guys are not real followers. 
Well, they're not true for that. But look at this centurion man, the half Jew. The half Jew. He simply said, you don't have to come. Speak the word and it shall happen. Although I traveled miles to get to you, you don't have to come. I don't need to carry back the miracle. The miracle can be done as you just speak the word. So it's not that God didn't find faith. So some of us here talking about, I remember two pastors from NCU, I was driving with them and they said, Marvin, it's not that God is not working miracles, but people are looking for, people are looking for, what's the word he use? Dramatic things. People are looking for drama. And I said, but come to think of it, don't we serve a dramatic God? God is filled with dramatics. The man make fire. Come down for heaven. The man wait. He, he waited until they lift the three Hebrew boys. They threw them in at the fire before him show up. Mm. <laughs> you really allow me to wait till the man them throw Daniel down at the lion then, and then lock up the lion mouth? Mm. Aren't you dramatic? Dramatic much. I think God is dramatic, Reggie. Dramatic. On. Everything about him is dramatic. So I said, ha, ah, yes, I am looking for the dramatics. I'm looking for it. Where people, people, because we criticize the other people, like the Benny Inn ministries and those people who touch people in their foreign and they fall over and, and they heal and they this. And we criticize them and say, oh, they're evil. But what are you doing? At least the evil pastors are doing the evil things to convince people. How much followers do Benny Inn has? Hundreds of thousands. Some of us, some of our, our churches are so scanty because we have used our so-called perfection or so-called godliness and run people from God. We've, 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 we've cast out so many. And some people, and it's not that I don't believe that there's a God and I believe, I, I believe in my God. I love my God. I trust God. But it needs to be displayed in how we deal with people. Needs to be displayed. But I'm not more for saying a regime. We don't have a regime. But I'm not more for saying. No, I'm not more for saying. <laughs> okay. I, I really appreciate you for taking the time to invite me to your platform. It's it's really good. Yeah. Um, I guess I guess a lot of persons within my circle who never really understood Marvin mm -hmm. will now get a chance to start to understand what I stand for, who I am, and that will not change. That will not change. As it relates to the whole polygamous thing, please. No, I can't yeah. just tell you about it because who is that? Yeah, yeah. my grand couple of my men, you know, yeah. legally. <laughs> right. One more thing I want to say about that though. Like the last thing I'll say about that, because I, I want to bring up this, 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 this point. When we look, when we look about when we look on marriage though, marriage is like a reflection with between our relationship with God, right? Us the church, us humanity. Our relationship that's with God. The that, that's of, how the Bible, the Bible kind of put it like that, yeah. Right. But then God now said, God is a jealous God, right? And God, God now uh, we put nothing before him. So wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't polygamy kind of break down that, that whole metaphor there? Because I think for me, marriage, marriage is to teach us more about, not only, but our main point of marriage is to teach us more about our relationship with God and that union. So I'm thinking polygamy might threaten that. Where is it? Um, so that simply means that the men who stood for God, who had many wives, the Davids, uh -huh. the, the other persons, that simply means that because the David that I know and why David is well respected throughout the scriptures, it's not for his cunning ways, but it's for his repentant ways. If anything had displeased God, David would remove it. Dave, that's what made David so loved and feared. God loved David. God loved David because David is not going to do anything to defy God. When he does it and it is and he's confronted and realized he's repentant and has to forgive. And if having those many women was a problem for God, David would dismiss them instantly. If God had said, kill all of them and leave one, he would kill all of them. 
and live on. That was the kind of man David was. So I do understand your query, your question um, about the whole union and marriage. Yeah, but you can still maintain that union in a polygamous relationship because David maintained his union with God. He had a powerful relationship with God. He did not put, because the problem is, God is jealous when you put the things or the people before him, when they become your God. That's what the whole matter of jealousy and God being a jealous God is when you put things before him. It's just like the whole jewelry, the matter of jewelry. And we say, oh, it's not supposed to be a jewelry. That's what I was taught growing up, but it's a lie. The children of Israel, they had their jewelry and it was never a problem until when they took it off, made the golden calf and put the calf before God. That's when your jewelry becomes an offense to me, God. Before they always had it. I mean, they had to have had it to pull it and use it. Yes. Right. right. So it was never a problem. Moses did not tell them, say, put away your jewelry. He didn't tell them. It became a problem when they took it off. And this inanimate object now became meaning and life to them. Mm -hmm. That's when God said, ah, uh ah, -uh. uh -uh. You can't put no graven images mm -hmm. before me. It needs to be me all the time. If you have 10 women, you still should not put, it should not be a case where you worship them and you don't worship me. You're all about the, the breasts and the ass and the look and the hip and, and, and you're all into them. And you don't give me no, no, you should say, God, thank you these beautiful specimen that you have bestowed upon me help me not to ever let them or sex get in the way of my praising you if that should ever be then remove them remove it my car my job whatever it is because it's not just women and relationship it, it, your relationship with god is, is everything even your finances you put your finances before god then god becomes jealous Yes, mm -hmm. you put your car before, and by putting your car before God is by you not doing godly things with your car. So you drive past the, the guy who's going to church, but he looks ragged enough to come into your dance. So it becomes a material thing that you're worshiping because the fact that no, any and anybody can't go in there, you're worshiping it. It's so important to you. But if I, Jesus, if I, Jesus was passing, I would take them up. So that's no, me being God, but you're not being God-like. And we should be God-like. We are Christians, Christ-like, yes? Mm -hmm. So if we're not Christ-like um, in, in, in everything, you know, we do everything. Even for some people, they're close. You can try to go to some guys around them fancy suits, some of them pass of it, and make, maybe it's look a bleach, go catch it. What? What? You're mad. <laughs> No, man, I'm telling you, we have to be careful, Papa. For me, I don't know if I answered your question um, as it relates to, you know, the whole marriage. But, 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 but yeah, marriage, marriage is a union, is a union, and it, it's, it's just like the relationship between the church and God. It's just like the relationship that God has with the church. Mm -hmm. So you should have respect for it. So it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that it should be married to one woman or marriage to one man. Um, and then you would have perfected the whole understanding or concept of God to man and man to God and that kind of way. No, I don't think so. You can have the five women and you marry them as long as they don't get involved and you still maintain that love and respect that God has for the church. You maintain the same love and respect to your wives, right? Because in some culture where it is okay, um, like India and, and, and some parts of Africa, um, I mean, you, you, you can't just marry the people and that, or you have to have the money to take care of them because if you're not in the position, then, and there are certain rules, there are just certain rules. You, you just can't take on as many if you cannot afford them. Mm -hmm. It will not happen. And it might even become against the law. Don't there, you can even lose your life for it. So they, these, these countries that supports polygamy, they do have rules, they do have laws, and the people who are getting involved, they do know what they're getting into. And as you said, you know, when um, Sarah 
tell and say, yo, I can't have no kids. Go, take your helper. Yeah. And some of you that say, no, these are powerful people in the Bible. You, know? you can't talk about those scriptures. You know? At least she saw within herself that she couldn't give him a child. And she said, yo. But that one was an error, though. You would agree? It was. That one was yeah. an error, for sure. Yes. But and because she, she felt bad. She, you know, she, she wasn't able to, to give the man no, no, no pitney. You understand the message? And she, she wanted him to have a child because everybody was looking for the Messiah to come to their lineage. Everybody was looking for the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So when a woman couldn't, couldn't it, it, the pressure was on her. The burden was on her. Because men got married to women in those days to procreate. Most of them never get married just because they want to have sex or just for the light. That's all we have to feel love. Them one for years say, yo, the woman pregnant. They couldn't wait to hear that. She's pregnant. And it's a boy. It's a what? Because everybody wanted to be the bearer of the Messiah. Yeah, everybody wanted to be the bearer of the Messiah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a powerful thing. So even though some people want oh, to get pregnant, people get pregnant, Benji. I love kids. <laughs> love kids. I want, a, I want a dozen. I would take a dozen kids, right? How much, how much you have? On record, <laughs> three, <laughs> three, who knows? Possibly four or five, never know, but three. Okay. And I love, I, I, I love my kids. I love my kids dearly. And um, yeah, and I, I, I want to be there. For, they're, they're not with me. They're with their mother in the Bahamas. Uh -huh. I'm here in Jamaica. I really want them to come back to Jamaica because, I mean, you know, things for me in the Bahamas doesn't work. You know, it's very difficult and very uncomfortable being there, can't work. I did a video that was talking about, you know, the hurricane two years ago that, you know, my life was threatened. I had to leave. And I do feel threatened, you know, um, going there. So I really want my kids. I want them to be here in Jamaica where I can see my kids. They're going out of my sight. And it has affected me, but God knows what he's doing and um, everything in due season. Yeah. Everything in due season. But, but I love kids. Love my kids. Love them, especially my little daughter. Oh, my princess. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, she's everything like her daddy. And I, you know, I love my kids. Yeah. So, so Marvin, yes, sir. To, I'm going to have to have your back, you know, because we have to talk about this vaccine and more you talk about what you're doing with trading, because I want you to be able to, um, you know, highlight that. And I want you to talk in depth about where currency is going, digital, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, all those things. So I really, yeah, want, to, I really want to have those topics to, uh, discussed. We, ne we need to. We need yeah, to because I, I am ready to, to help a lot of persons um, financially in terms of um, teaching them the skill set of Forex trading. Uh -huh. It's very, um, you know, cost effective. I, I teach for like 250 US dollars one month and I can teach you within two weeks of that month. Um, and, and you have your, your independence, your financial independence. So it will be, it will be a nice topic. Um, cryptocurrency is the new thing. It, you know, some persons now calling me profit because I told them, you know, a long time that these things are going to skyrocket in value and look at it. Uh -huh. You know, Bitcoin got six to 4,000 US dollars for one. Um, Tron is, is getting out of the blocks now. It's, it's a powerful, it's a powerful way and a lot of, pastors are not um, talking about, you know, the financial aspect of people's life. They don't care. They just want you to come to church, have to give your offering. And some of them just waiting for you to fornicate or come into adultery to read you out. Uh, sometimes it doesn't, yeah, I'm tell you, it's a, it's a major turn off, but I still believe that there are good people in the church. I still believe that they're good pastors. It's not everybody. I must say this at the end of the video. It's not everybody is like that. And for the persons who are godlike, the people who love, and, and stuff. God bless you on enough love up and um, keep keep it real. Just keep it real. Yeah. So you can't one person you can't fool, and that's God. And that's why I keep it real all the time. If me a funny kid, me not afraid to tell nobody. Me commit adultery, I am not afraid to tell anybody because the truth is I cannot hide from God. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a point I wanted to make earlier because when we speak about the pastors and we speak we speak about how Jesus treated leadership, I think the main problem was the hypocrisy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was a problem. Yeah. So yeah. even if you're a leader, 
if you fall and you admit that you fall and you acknowledge that others will fall and you treat them with love, that's not a problem. Yeah. The problem is when you make it look like you now fall and then you're condemning everybody. I think that was the problem. Yeah, that is the problem. Because, I mean, and, and a lot of members are to be blamed. A lot of members, church people are not to be blamed because it's, it's, it's a learned... It's a learned notion that every pastor needs to be perfect. So if something should happen to a pastor, there are, very, there are a lot of good pastors who got um, sidetracked, found a nice little sister, have sex. They really want to do much of their marriage and the church read them out and you know, put them aside. And these were powerful men of God and still are powerful men. But we chastise and kill them because we expect them to be perfect. No, there's no perfection on earth. You only achieve perfection in Jesus, through Jesus, because the character of the man is already filthy. I told you that. We were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. The only time that we will be transformed is when the Bible tells you about, um, in, a, in a revelation, that we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Yeah. And corruption, uh, uh, I'm going to put on incorruption. You understand what I mean? So a lot of people looking to be perfect. Don't have you cannot be perfect on this. You're already, from before you were conceived, you were imperfect. You were, you were, you were nothing close to perfection, nothing. So people still striving to be perfect. You can't be perfect because your very thoughts. The Bible says you sin in your thoughts as you do in your actions. And there's some of these people they may not be fornicating or committing adultery, but if God were supposed to project their thoughts on a white board, you would be surprised to know what the pastors and the elders and the deacons and the deaconesses and the holy people and the Bible worker were thinking about you this week are thinking about someone this week. You'd be surprised to know. And that is why we're not in a position to condemn anybody because we are all messed up mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially. And that is why all of us should die daily because we need God. We need God, the ultimate redeemer. Yeah. Tutu. For me, yeah. for me, I feel like my, my approach is, my approach is, we should strive to be perfect, understanding that we can't be. And what I mean, yes. what I mean by that is like, if you have to play football, right? If you have to play football, every time you go down, you try to score, right? But you know yes. that every time you're not gonna score. So if yes. you don't score, you're not gonna give up and say, all right, I'm done play. But right. every time you're trying to score, right? And that's yes. how you'll get the best results. So yes. we should stri strive to be perfect, understanding that we can't be. And then we'll yes. be as, like as by God's grace as 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 good as we can be, and He'll bring us to where we need to be. Yeah, yeah. We just need to be a supporting. We need to play a supporting role to each other. Mm -hmm. Where they'll fall, I embrace. I fall, they'll embrace. If we keep it like that, there is nothing. It's just like with the the the, the um, disciples in the upper room. The Holy Spirit just could not be poured. That's why when say Adventist church don't have the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about speaking in unknown tongues. I'm talking about the fact that people can walk up inside there. So, and the Holy Spirit is so powerful, like a mighty rushing wind, where crippled people that have been in the church for years, we can't immediately say, what kind of God we're serving if we can't heal? If we can't heal nobody right now, you're telling me that every prayer we pray, oh, most righteous and eternal father, Lord, you know the brother uh, he has cancer, Jesus. And uh, let, let me tell you something. You are praying and 10 people turn up in the audience, some are looking at the ceiling, some sit down, some depend on them phone. We are not on one accord. So you know what? You yeah. know what I hate, Marvin? You know what I hate? I hate when we pray. I will always pray that at least one. So we say, if at least one person is reached, or at least one, like why, uh, yes. why are we minimizing the impact? The, the reach, the impact, right. yeah, the reach, yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, that's man, true. I hate that. Like we and, think and so just, small. The coward. Another thing that I hate about um, how we pray, if it is Thy will, mm -hmm. Lord. And most persons who pray like that, they pray because they don't believe. They don't, they themselves don't believe that they can pray and God can heal. They but because they don't want to be embarrassed right, right. that their power was not efficacious enough. Right. 
Say it again. Then then out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it's covered. It's, 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 they, let me tell you, one of the most powerful prayer or statement that was made by anybody in the Bible was from the three Hebrew boys. The man said, listen, oh king, let me tell you this. Be it known, be it known that our God is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. But, but if he chooses not to come, we're still not going to bow. Preaching, you can't imagine the level of when Jesus suffered said, <laughs> listen to that. <laughs> they, they knew they were going to die. They knew. And I can just imagine that the persons who stood around them, some of them said, just, you don't have to kneel. Just bend down, no? Cr crouch a little bit. At least look like you're doing it. Eh? No, go to hell. I will not bow to no grave image. And they, and look at that. And Jesus showed up for those men long before they were thrown in the fiery furnace. A lot of pastors don't even know that because their spiritual inclination or discernment can't even pick it up. And you probably ask me, really? Yeah, because the Bible said that not even smoke was smelled on their clothes. When you light a wood fire, which it was, the furnace yeah. at that time, I, I used to light wood fire and cook on growing up. And a wood fire of that magnitude is going to have smoke. Smoke, a travel for a long distance. Everybody, I got smoke. The Bible said not even smoke was smelt on their clothes. This simply means that they were covered long before they even got to the entrance of the fire furnace. Another point is that the persons who threw them in the fire, if I hold you, if this is you, and I'm going to throw you into a fire, I have to be behind you mm -hmm. to hold and throw. The Bible said that the men who threw them in the fire were consumed by the fire. You understand what I, They were that close to it. So if I am in front of you, I am even more close to the heat of the fire. So God covered them long. Mm -hmm. the, the hair on their head should have, should have um, swinged long time. Their skins should have started start to burn because they are even closer to the heat, but the person behind them got damaged. So the Holy Spirit covered them from they were standing. So even what I hate is the pastors who come and when they're preaching and or the carrier and, and God called an angel and the angel said, Lord, it's going to take me five minutes. And God said to another angel, uh, uh, you, you, you come, uh, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take me two minutes, Jesus. And I said, no, 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 I can't have that because they're about to be cast in the fire. And when you listen to these pastors adding to the scripture, because that is not in the scripture. And the Bible says you should not add or take away from the word of God. And you are the commander. And, and God said, Gabriel. And Gabriel said, Lord, it will take me 30 seconds. And God said, no, that's going to be too long. And God said, Jesus. <laughs> and then you see everybody up. Everybody get up and say, hallelujah. And it's, it's amazing to know how impactful you and your words and your heresy can be on the minds of the people who not read for themselves because kill some people dead. That is in the scriptures. It is not there. It's a lie. Yes, it's a lie. You can still preach the same sermon and talk about Jesus showing up for the people then because it was Jesus who showed up. Why are you going to say God called other angels? And so you're saying that God didn't know <laughs> the speed of those angels to get down to earth before he called them. Hmm. I thought God was all knowing. Hmm. And you see, these are some of the things, brother, I tell you, it turns me off. Do not create these pretty sermons and add to the word. God don't need you to add to what he did. He don't need you to add nothing to his miracle because then you would not be preaching in truth. And the Bible says you must what? Hmm? Teach brothers and sisters in spirit and in what? Sure. Spirit and in truth. 
So if you come and you add to it, that's not truthful. It's a lie. And no wonder why nobody can't get beyond hallelujah and can't get beyond praise the Lord and cannot get beyond a amen. I cannot get healing because your message is filled with lies. And God cannot heal me because you, the servant of God, and you, the shepherd, you're preaching lies. It sounds good. It looks good. It's well articulated. But hello, a lie. And God is a perfect God. It's a lie. It's a lie. Wow. Uh, we yeah. say a lie we don't. We don't. We don't. Yeah. We don't. We tell us, you know. Be careful, you come for your program in the country. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> you know me. And I mean, wow. you don't have to agree with me in a deal. You don't have to agree with me. Nobody has to agree with me, but it's how I feel. And right. it's how I see it. And that's the only way you're going to be a humanitarian. You're going to be a child of the king. Where, where you, you, you let people know that I am not perfect. One, let people know I am not perfect, but I'm trying. And if I fall, I want you to help me up. Don't disgrace me in front of everybody else and read me out of church. Who gives sinner the right to read out another sinner? When God is the ultimate lamb, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the one who forgives. You don't forgive sin. Board members, you don't forgive sins. Jesus forgives our sins. So allow Jesus to take my sin. When I come to church, you don't offer me a second baptism. Because you offer me a second baptism, now go force me now to walk so circumspect and hope to God I don't mess up. You're already messed up. Your character is, your nature is a sinful one. You're already messed up. There's no two way about it. So you will sin again. Everybody who dips in the water, you will sin again. You can't hide it. You will. Because the Bible says you sin without even knowing it. And that's why we have to die daily. You know yeah, what I'm thinking right. about? We're not going to go into detail in this, but probably in the next episode. But what I was also thinking about in that Bible class was the vows that we take when we, before we're baptized. And, and those, <laughs> but <laughs> those were troublesome to me as well because a vow is a serious thing. And it, it, it but next episode. <laughs> yes. I definitely yeah, have to I, I, like, I, really, I really like this. Uh -huh. I do like this. Um, it, it, because I'm this kind of guy, as you know, I, I am very expressive right. verbally. <laughs> and I, I, I'm happy I get the chance to, to talk. I'm, I'm sure this might shed light on some, some things for some people. Mm -hmm. Some people might not feel like they're odd or rare or weird to be thinking what I am thinking. And I mean, I am not God. I am not God. It's just my personal convictions that I am putting out there, oh, I feel, mm -hmm. oh, I feel. It right. doesn't, I'm not saying it's law or that it is God. I'm just telling you about how I feel right. and how I think um, things should operate from a Christian perspective. That's how me feel. Yeah, man. All right, these are just my thoughts. <laughs> That's how it has to go. Everybody shares and then people can make their yeah. decisions for themselves. But- Me have a feeling that a video is a big deal. Me have a feeling that a video I'm gonna reach a whole for years. <laughs> to all the people who are watching, yo, God bless you. Love it. to all the pastors who are very angry at this point. It's, it's okay, brother. Breathe. Breathe. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. This was episode three of TBH, to be honest. Look out for Edgar. We're going to have him again for sure. And I want some people to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel too, please. Yes, it's go ahead. Go ahead. The Marvin, the Marvin Edgar Show. The Marvin Edgar Show on YouTube. All right. Marvin Edgar Show. I haven't done any videos in a while, but I'm I'm gonna be um, doing back some videos very soon, like next week. So in the meantime, I would love some subscribers. Thank you. Um, the Marvin Edgar Talk Show. All dope, right. Dope, dope. All right, Marvin. Thank you again for coming. It's definitely a pleasure. Yeah. Same here. Appreciate right, it. Cool. Peace out. Cool. Yeah, man.